Coyote or Bobcat, then they can probably take him away without ease, unfortunately. Well, I also really hate to be that guy, but be sure to click- Oh, come on, why did my viewing session have to be interrupted? Oh well, I guess I'll have to wait for the part 2 next week. What's up everybody, in this video I'm going to be going over how to raise ducks. There are many steps that go into raising ducks, but in this video I'm going to cover them as simply as I possibly can. Enjoy. By the way, this will cover tips that I missed from the last video as well, so go. So I hear you asking, why would you actually choose a duck over a chicken? Well, there are many reasons why. First of all, they eat less food per egg laid. And although they don't lay that many eggs, they still can produce it up to the triple digits each year. Like Rowan's, they may only lay a couple dozen eggs a year, but those eggs are pretty cool. They're huge. Like, two chicken eggs is about, like, that duck egg. Either way, though, that's a pretty nice breed of duck you can get. They also forage a lot. Like, they will even, like, take away some of the plant some of the bugs that may attack your plants in the garden, but they'll still leave the plant, except there's just a couple you might want to cage up. I'm going to list them right now. The strawberries, blueberries, lettuce, and all those little tiny plants that, like, you, like, take the leaves off of, and really small plants, like, the produce is like, right there, and the ducks love them. Tomatoes, they might try to take the tomatoes, but not typically. They're definitely really good help for that sort of gardening work, although you might want to monitor them just in case they go rogue. So now we're going to be talking about egg production. I know I kind of covered this in the last video, but duck egg production is very different from chickens. There are only certain breeds like khaki campbells that'll actually lay a lot of eggs every single year. If you want more of an experience than an actual like egg production sort of business, then I would 100% recommend the Rowans and Cayugas as I said in the last video, as those two breeds of ducks are more based on experience rather than actual egg laying. If you want like egg laying, then I would definitely recommend breeds like the uh the pake not the paking the other breeds like khaki campbell and i'm putting more on screen because that's the first one that comes to mind maybe even the indian runner ducks now there's a lot of ducks that you can do and you can even sort of um create your own duck breed by using breeding and selective breeding and all that whatnot you can create some duck breeds as well if you want although it takes a little bit of work and it's not as simple as chickens where you just take the right hen and the right rooster and there you go, you got some nice new chickens, but with ducks, it's a little bit more complicated. So, if you know what a drake or a male duck is, and you already know that there are some things that we need to talk about about them. Are they really worth it is a question I'm getting asked a lot, and I'm going to answer some more questions in a future section of the video, but this is one that I'm oftentimes asked. Are they really worth it? If you're looking into breeding projects, then yeah, 100% they're worth it. Although, if you want to keep them with your chickens, don't even bother, man. Like, they're not going to do well with the chickens, especially if you have a rooster. And... Unfortunately, some drakes don't know the difference between a chicken and a duck, or even a goose sometimes. So, yeah, you, if you're going to keep them with your chickens, don't get a drake, or severely monitor those chickens, man, because they are going to need a lot of help when that happens. But if you're planning on keeping the two flocks separate, then they will help at least a little bit in terms of defense and, all, and how all that other stuff is concerned because of how useful they might be, but only mainly for breeding projects and all that whatnot. Now next up we got the question, are drakes aggressive? Now this is a question I can answer simply. It depends really, it doesn't, it's not really a breed thing, it's just the way the drake is sort of feeling. Now for the most part they're okay, they're tame around humans only because of, you know, the fact that they're ducks and we're a lot bigger than them, but other than that they can and will be aggressive if necessary, and they are definitely aggressive to other drakes obviously, so make sure you're watching yourself when you're around them, obviously same with like roosters and all, but like they're seriously not nearly as aggressive as some roosters, but some of them can be way worse. Like, if you're in a pool area and that duck happens to be there and you jump in, it'll chase you in, so not recommended.
If you raise ducks from eggs, you either need to buy fertilized duck eggs from a reputable breeder or hatchery, or get them from your own mating pair of duck. You need an incubator that can hold duck eggs and provide them with the right temperature, humidity, and ventilation. Here are the steps to hatch duck eggs. You want to set up the incubator and you want to set the temperature to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 or 38 degrees Celsius, and relative humidity to about 55%. On a wet bulb thermometer, of course. You want to adjust the ventilation according to the manufacturer's instructions. You should let the incubator stabilize for a day or two before adding the eggs. And then you want to select the eggs. You can choose the eggs that are in a good shape without crack, double yolks, misshapen, oversized, undersized, or dirty. You should also use eggs that are fresh, ideally one to three days old. Place the eggs in the incubator, and you want to gently place the egg, of course, with the pointed end slightly down and the round end slightly up. You should leave some space between the eggs for air circulation, and you want to turn the eggs about four times daily. You need to turn the eggs over every six hours, so they receive even heat on all, on all sides and prevent the embryos from sticking to the shell. You can use an automatic egg turner to do, or do it by hand, but you should wash your hands before and after. After handling the eggs and you want to remove any unfit eggs after a week you can check the eggs for fertility and viability after a week of incubation using candling device flashlight the most simple one on this list if you see clear shells that means the eggs are infertile and you should discard them if you see cloudy shells that means the eggs are dead and that you should discard them if you see dark spots or veins that means the egg is developing normally and you should leave them alone transfer the eggs to a hatching tray about 25 days later you need to move the eggs to a separate hatcher, or change the settings in the incubator to prepare them for hatch. You should lower the temperature to 99 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius and then raise the humidity to 65%. You should also stop turning the eggs and increase the ventilation openings by 50%. Then want to wait for the ducklings to hatch. Start seeing signs of hatching after about 28 days of incubation, but some breeds still take longer, maybe up to 35 days if necessary. The ducklings will first pip or break a small hole in the shell then zip or crack a larger opening around the shell, and then emerge or push their way out of the shell. This process can take several hours or even days. So be patient. Do not interfere with the ducklings unless they are in trouble. And remove hatched ducklings from the hatcher. And once most of the ducklings have hatched and dried, you should remove them from the unhatched egg in case they are late bloomers, but discard the eggs after they've not hatched for 48 hours. This thing has been sitting in my inventory for the last, like, I don't know, since June? <laughs> so you could do the math there, but either way, just be sure to click the video on screen. I know I didn't make it to 8 minutes as I promised I probably would've. It's literally October 21st now that I'm recording this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. The video on the screen is patiently awaiting for you. If you haven't already, be sure to click on it, man. It's worth it. Just, just, come on, man. It's the last part of the video. Anyways, part 3 shall be coming out on November 11th. I know it's a long wait. But just mark your calendars, 